thing here. We've got a lot to discuss. Um, this is going to be a conversational stream. You guys can ask me about this game. Um, so the stream today, you guys have probably heard about the <clears throat> the Atlas restrictions. Um, they're pretty specific, uh, and on top of those restrictions, there are things that I don't want to spoil for you. I know it's I know it's hard to believe. We people say that we spoil a lot of things, but we really don't want to. Our intent is to keep the good parts of the games for you guys. Um, we do want to do that. We do try to do that. And so there are things that I don't want to spoil. So if I have to load a save. I'm going to cut off the video so I don't ruin anything because there are some file names that will probably spoil something for some of you. Um, so keep that in mind. We're just going to keep it to the first month here of Persona 5 uh, in April. Um, if I think a conversation is particularly spoily, I'm going to speed fast it. So uh, we're going to we're gonna try. We're going to have to feel our way through this one. But know that I'm going to be try to try to be very conscious of the spoilers in this game. But uh, I also want to show you some things. So we're not starting at the very beginning because that would just be going through dialogue and I don't think that makes for a very good stream and I don't think it does a good job of showing off the game and, and what it's capable of. So, without any further ado, let's get started with Persona 5. Um, this is a warning. If you are thinking about starting Persona 5 or you've got Persona 5 but you haven't started it yet and you don't want to see anything, you know you don't want to see anything, what are you doing here? Don't watch this! Come on! You know better than that. So this is your warning if you're the kind of person that wants absolutely every aspect to be fresh. I sympathize with that, but don't watch this stream. Alright, great. Um, Alright, so we're going to do a quick check-in with Sejro and Godfrey. Sejro and Godfrey are trying to figure out what arcana they belong to. Uh, Sejro belongs to the Lover's Arcana, I think, and uh, Godfrey belongs to the Fool Arcana. That's what they've decided for themselves. Maybe you can suggest a better Arcana for them to belong to, but that's what they think at the moment. All right, here we go. Into Persona 5. So before we get started, uh, let's just check out the menu system and something that, <clears throat> as I was setting up this stream, I appreciated. Uh, so we're pretty early on in this game. I think this save file is like seven hours in. There's 16 save files, by the way, and I have them all across the entire game. Uh, how good these demons look. This is the best any Shin Megami Tensei demons have looked in the series. They're really, really, really fun to look at. Uh, I want to collect all of them because I, I, I've been playing Shin Megami Tensei for so long that I realize I have a connection with these things. I, I want to get them... Because you get a trophy for doing it, but I also want to get them just because I want to. I want to see all of them. Uh, there are some demons that I really, really like that I haven't encountered yet. But yeah, I think I think Atlas did a really nice job, um, and they're all really highly detailed and, and very expressive, and they all have kind of their own personality to them. Yeah, I mean Pixie, right? The last Shin Megami Tensei game I played, with, it, seriously anyway, was Apocalypse. You know, that's on a little handheld, and you're just seeing sprites. But this is. Uh, this is much better. Obviously. Alright, so... Um, we are after school right now. Um, in Persona games, you have free time, basically, where you can decide what you want to do. And uh, this is very important. More important than it maybe initially seems if you're brand new to the series. Uh, you can kind of do whatever you want. You can hang out with friends, um, and that will increase your relationship with them which could net you very positive abilities. Um, a lot of the abilities that you unlock through your social links, or in this game they call them confidants, are extremely useful to the point where it's it's worth like seeking out as many confidants as you can and seeing what they offer um, because a lot of them are quite strong. You can do that. Uh, you can also do activities like you can work at your part-time job if you need a little extra money. Um, you can do other things that increase your social stats. Um, Oops. So let me click on my dude here. So your social stats are divided into five categories. You've got knowledge, guts, proficiency, kindness, charm. All of these things are used in different ways. So proficiency, for example, um, the higher you get that up, the better you are at making thieves tools. Um, also, some relationships are locked behind uh, 
stat requirements. So you may not even be able to talk to somebody if your knowledge isn't at a certain rank or your charm isn't at a certain rank. And so it's important to level these things up as much as you can um, so you can see as much of the game as possible. These menus, yeah! Um, I feel like people have kind of seen a lot of the menus and stuff in trailers already, so they don't... It's not as impressive to them, which I totally understand, um, but it really can't be overstated how impressive the menus are. Um, there's just a flair to everything that is pretty insanely impressive. Um, and you'll see a lot more of that. So something Persona 5 has that's pretty constant is you have a phone and your friends and other people will text you uh, to kind of pull you one way or another. This person might ask you to hang out with them or ask you to do something for them or something like that. Um, and so if you kind of want a direct path through the game, uh, you can just kind of follow what people are saying on your phone. So, uh, Ahn, for example, is texting me here and she says, Do you want to go to the palace? Palaces, are, they're the dungeons in this game. Um, and we don't want to go to the palace right now. You can see in the top right hand corner, I have 13 days to go to the palace and steal this guy's heart. Um, if I don't do it by that time, that's not good. So they're kind of applying pressure on you in that way. And I think for a lot of people, it freaks them out. They don't like timers in games. I understand that. I know a lot of people that don't like Majora's Mask, which is an amazing game, uh, because of that. But I actually think Persona 5 does a good job of applying pressure and making it feel urgent without twisting the knife too much. I feel like you always have plenty of time to do whatever you need to do. Um, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, let's go, let's go explore the city, shall we? Let's go to uh, Shibuya. I've exhausted everything I can um, on April 18th, and I tried a certain character, but that took time, so I created a separate save. So I'm thinking, do I take the social link, or do I load back to before acquiring the social link and head towards the dungeon? Uh, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't, I don't play this game like a min maxer. I just sort of follow my heart and do what I want to do, and I accept the decisions. Um, I think if you're playing on normal, it's not so hard that you can't play how you want to play, as it were. Um, but I know a lot of you do like to min max. And I'm sure there are plenty of guides out there that let you do that. This music is on fleek. Yeah, uh, the music is phenomenal. And has only gotten better as the game has gone on. There are some really amazing tracks um, at the very end of the game that I'm excited for some of you to eventually hear. All right, so this is Igor, uh, a Persona staple in every Persona game. Uh, he kind of helps us fuse our Personas, get stronger ones, and that essentially lets us do better things in battle. Um, so we're going to go check that out. This might be my favorite Velvet Room ever, by the way. Not might be. I think I feel pretty strongly about it. It is my favorite Velvet Room. Hey, inmates. I was waiting. These are the two attendants, Justine and Caroline. Uh, they're kind of a good cop, bad cop dilemma, or dynamic going on. And... They're, they're pretty fun. Uh, they have a stronger personality, I think, than some of the other Velvet Room attendants. And, uh, yeah, I like, I like the things that they, they kind of do. They're, they're kinda, they kind of bully you. They don't treat you very good. As you can see, uh, Caroline is kicking us into the door. They're so cute. I love them already. Yeah, yeah, they are really cute. All right, so this is in voice, so I'll just go ahead and read it. Our master has arranged an access point to assist you in coming here directly from the real world. That door you just went through is it. Be careful, inmate. This, too, shall aid in your rehabilitation. Make good use of it. All right. Uh, so they're just saying, hey, um, go into this door. If you need our services, we'll be here for you. When you go to a place, you can fast travel there. Um, I think the fast travel system in Persona 5 is excellent. It's really easy to get around super quickly, and the load times are small. And so you can kind of just do what you want to do when you want to do it with very little waiting. Um, and so that creates a good rhythm to the daily events. 
uh, it once you get into it and you're kind of aware of all of the things that you can do, um, making those decisions, seeing those stats go up, uh, building those confidant relationships, it's really addicting. And hopefully you'll get a sense of that rhythm, but we're still pretty early on. All right. So, uh, we have two options in the Velvet Room right now. We're going to unlock more as we go through the game, but I'm not going to spoil those. Um, so the first one, and the most important one, is the Persona Fusion. And I do want to show you get this off to you guys just because of how brutal it is. Um, so, Persona Fusion slash Demon Fusion um, is what makes Shin Megami Tensei Shin Megami Tensei. And... Uh, <clears throat> Basically, all of these different demons, they all have different abilities. So this demon right here can cast electricity, which is good if the enemy is weak to electricity. So, you know, it's sort of a rock, paper, scissors dynamic that you've seen in a lot of other RPGs. We can switch between any of these demons during battle, and we can get their abilities. So they all have different streaks and weaknesses. So what we choose to bring into battle is obviously important. Um, it sounds, I think, a lot more complicated than it actually is. It'll become pretty apparent when we get into combat here. But we have... How many personas do we have? We have five personas. So we can fuse them. So let's take our weaker ones here and see what we can get. So I'm level six. I can't make anything uh, bigger than level six because that's just a restriction of the game. You can't make something that's a higher level than you. So all of these level seven ones can't make them. But I can make this. I can make this Incubus. Not terrible. Um, which I already have, so there's no point in making it. Let's see what else we can make. We can make a Silky. Looks pretty tough. And I'm just going to do this just to show it off. I'm not keeping this save file anyway. Like so, like we're combining uh, these two personas together. The Incubus and the Bicorn. And uh, there's one open slot with this fusion. I can bring over... These are the skills the other two have. I can bring over one of these skills and give it to this persona. So I'm going to bring over... Uh, the fire spell, it's always useful. And then this is what I want you guys to see. Like I said, I love just how totally brutal this uh, this fusion is. Let us begin. So we're just throwing tarps over their heads and then putting them in the guillotine. I never get sick of this. And then those sever heads make a new persona. It's pretty cool. Um, there are other ways that you could torture your personas to do other effects, but uh, yeah, it's great. All right, so we have that now. We're good to go. Are you finished? Um, so going to the Velvet Room and fusing Personas and stuff, that doesn't take any time. time uh, but there are a lot of the other activities do take time. So if we choose to bump up a social stat or hang out with somebody, that's going to take our afternoon. Um, and so that's kind of what's lending weight to these decisions is you only have so much time. We only have 13 days until we got to steal this guy's heart. And so how we choose to spend that time is important and will uh, change how the game goes for us. So, uh, a, future, a useful feature that was in Persona 4 Golden on the Vita and is here as well, is you can just hit the touchpad if you're connected to the internet. You can see what other people have done. So, 90% of people spent time with uh, Ryuji, or they spent time with uh, Takemi, a doctor. So we can choose who we spend time with, and that's great. Or we can just go to the palace and try to steal the heart. But, because we're trying to show this game off, let's go to the palace. Uh, let's explore just a few of the shops before we do that. So this is Shibuya. Um, you've got this store Welcome. that uh, sells a health recovery item, uh, and you have this plant in your room that you can grow. This is a nutrient for that. So yeah, not super exciting. Uh, some of the stores you can go in, others you can't. Um, the ones you can go in tend to have more going on in them, like they might have confidants in there, or some other story purpose. We can go into the arcade, for example. And yeah, it's cool. There's not much to it, but it's cool. I feel like the game audio is a touch on the low side. Can't really hear it while you're talking. All right, thanks, Blood. We will bump it up just a bit. I am talking pretty loudly. 
We'll bump it up a half notch here. Uh, the screen's going to freak out for a second, but it'll be fine. Let me know if this is better. There's so much stuff to do in this game, I keep finding new stuff all the way to the end of the game. Yeah, um, I'm kind of in the same boat. I feel like I've really taken my time and tried to explore as much as possible. And even now, 100 hours into the game, there's still things, like, pretty seemingly basic things where I'm like, Oh, I could do that? Oh, that would have been helpful to know much earlier on. But yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to uncover. Um, as I said on Frame Trap, though, as you can see, we can only go three places right now. And so they don't, they really don't give you too much at once. They always give you enough, uh, which is good. <sighs> enough where you feel like you have freedom and can make the meaningful decisions, but not so much that you have no idea what the correct decision is. Um, so let's go, I don't think I've met the doctor on this playthrough, so we're going to go meet her. She's pretty cool. She can be very helpful to us. She runs the clinic. Obviously, at the clinic, you can get healing items, uh, restore your health, revive you, cure status ailments, that sort of thing, as you would expect in an RPG. This is her office. We're going to talk to her. Oh. Um, so she, there's, <laughs> there are some bad rumors about her because she runs her own private practice and issues her own medicine, um, and people are very wary of that homemade medicine. That medicine, huh? What are you so, which conversation of mine did you eavesdrop on to hear that? We can actually just... I'm skipping this, not because I think it's super spoilery, but because you didn't get the beginning context for this. And so it may not make a lot of sense. So we're just going to breeze past this. Um, I do want to show you... How stylish the shop menus are. If you've seen the trailers, you probably have seen this already. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> the basic gist is we, uh, we took her homemade medicine and it didn't make us feel very good. She's trying to, good uh, evening. improve it. Skipping will be useful for subsequent playthroughs? Yes. Yes, it will be. Alright. So, we formed a new confidant. This always plays, or something very similar to this always plays. Whenever you get a new confidant, uh, letting you know that this person has a relationship that you can develop. So we're rank one. She's associated with the Death Arcana. Um, and more importantly, we get a new ability. So like I said, she gives us healing items at the clinic. Now that we've developed this relationship with her, we can get more items at the healing clinic. So, all right. if getting better healing items is important to us, it would probably be wise to develop this relationship. So, oh, you don't remember that part either? Well. All right, our gut's improved for uh, trying to endure her homemade medicine. Um, so that's another thing about social links is different social links. Not only will you get the skills by building up that relationship, hanging out with them, depending on who they are, might increase one of your social stats. So for that doctor, if we hang out with her more, our guts will slowly increase, which is a weird sentence to say. But um, This is Sojiro. He's taking care of us. Uh, for reasons that I don't really need to get into, but uh, he's kind of the, yeah. the dojima of this game, kind of the 
the tear the caretaker. Uh, Sober dub, Ben. Well, it was kind of different for me. I didn't have access to <laughs> uh, dub while I was playing the majority of this game. Oh, we can't go out yet. Okay, that's fine. So our options are actually limited to this cafe right now with how we can spend our time. We can clean our room, we can study, we can read, we can sleep, we can make thieves tools, all that kind of stuff. We can talk to the customers. This is a pompous male customer. Uh, anyway, yeah, I didn't have access to the Japanese VO until Tuesday, so I haven't checked it out yet, but I will check it out before I do the review. Um, so, as to whether I prefer sub or dub, I, I don't have an answer yet because I haven't listened to the sub. Alright, let's clean up our room. Our room is a mess. We're living in this attic. It's all dusty. Let's clean it up. Something that you can do, uh... Oh. That is new is you can customize a lot of your room um, as you hang out with people they'll give you gifts that you can put up and stuff like that like you can buy a not buy but you can win a Jack Frost doll that you can put up top and that stuff is pretty cool Witty Schnitty has just subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for the support. It's a brand new sub, everybody. Please give him some love. We're going to do a little Godfrey emote. Godfrey's my thing, and I don't use that emote enough. I dig the music. Yeah, I dig the music, too. Um, the vocal version of this song might be my favorite one in the whole thing. You hear so much of it, and I have not gotten sick of it in the slightest. Mm. Alright, so we got a book. That'll be useful. Um, reading can also increase certain stats. Shinigami Oakenshield. Uh, subscribe two months in a row. Thank you for the continued support. Here are your Sophies and a little easy A magic. All right, so uh, sometimes, so you go to school, right? Pretty much every day except Sunday, for the most part. Uh, it's good to have books. It's good to go to the bookstore and buy books because sometimes when you go on the train to school, you'll be able to get a seat. When you get a seat, um, they'll give you the chance to read one of your books and potentially increase one of your stats. So we're gonna do that now. Um, this doesn't increase our stats, but it's gonna give us information about a place that we could maybe go to and hang out with our friends at. Uh, Emba and I think asked my opinion on the dub. There's some weird pronunciation oh. stuff that I have a nitpicky problem with, but I think for the most part it's pretty good. I think the the actors and actresses uh, do a good job of of giving kind of a soul to the characters, uh, making them believable. And so I, th I would say overall, uh, the dub is is good. Outside of the, there are definitely some things to nitpick and criticize here and there, but it hasn't been too bad for me. Ryuji and An put in good performances, in my opinion. I think Ryuji... <clears throat> Ryuji is not my favorite character, but I think his performance in this game... Uh, he might have the best delivered performance of the whole thing. If I really think about it. Um, there's some moments that Ryuji really sells super well. Oh, so they're telling me about part-time jobs. Um... Part-time jobs are interesting because not only do they earn you some extra pocket change, they're needed um, to develop certain relationships with certain people. So to get close to somebody, you might have to take a job and spend some time there uh, to get connected with them, which is pretty cool. Um, so they're kind of explaining the importance of a part-time job, or Yuji's saying how much he needs some extra cash.
Ben Ryuji or Yosuke, who's the best bro? Um, I like Ryuji quite a bit. Not my favorite character in this game, for sure, but uh, I like him quite a bit. <clears throat> Yosuke was never my favorite in Persona 4. I certainly didn't mind him, but... I don't know. Yosuke's good. I don't really have any stronger feelings on it than that, so I probably prefer Ryuji. Now that I'm sorting out in my brain, but maybe I just need to go back and spend some time with the Oscar. I don't know. Uh, let's go get a part-time job, shall we? Um, you guys can help me decide where I work at. Junpei or Ryuji? Oh, Junpei for sure. I like Junpei better than both of them. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. They're, they're all very similar in a lot of ways, but uh, there's just something about the way Junpei carries himself that I that I like. Um, I also like him a lot in uh, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, quite a bit. Yeah, I like Junpei. <clears throat> Beef Bowl Restaurant. Oh, uh, something really important that I didn't take advantage of uh, until way later than I should have. This juice stand is really good. Go here on Sundays, and you can spend some money to get a drink. That drink will increase one of your social stats, but it doesn't take any time. This is one of the few ways that you can increase your social stats. Maybe the only way. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Don't quote me on that. Um, one of the few ways that you can increase your social stats without spending time, and so it's really good. Uh, so on Sundays, they have a special vegetable juice that you can do. So come here on Sundays. Uh, Sundays is also the home shopping network where you can buy stuff for a pretty reasonable pretty reasonable price. All right, so you get uh, a part-time job from one of these magazines. Doesn't matter which one you select. They all have the same job offers. So we can do convenience store, flower shop, beef bowl shop. I think the beef bowl shop is the best one, the most interesting one. Uh, but it's also the most intense, I think. Um... Another thing to... So you want to take a close look at these and think about how you're going to play. Because if we do the beef bowl one, it pays better than the other two jobs, but it's only available at night. Whereas if we do the uh, the flower shop, it's available both day and night. So if we wanted to have a day where we work twice, we could do that. We can't do that at the beef bowl shop. Um, and you get more or less money depending on how well you do at the job. So it's not just like you show up and it's the same thing every time. Uh, they kind of, uh, throw some obstacles in your way. Oh, and different jobs increase different things. So the Beef Bowl place will increase our proficiency. If we did the, um, Flower Shop, it would increase our kindness. That kind of thing. Yeah, so we're going to apply to the Beef Bowl place. <sighs> Oh, wait, is it? Wait a minute, Jeb. You can only work the beautiful shop at night. It, okay, it wants me to apply at night. Got it. Not a problem. We can go to the batting cage, though. I believe this also increases our proficiency. So let's go to Central Street. <clears throat> Yeah, the batting cage is fun. Oh, no, it's not here. It's not in Shibuya. It's in, uh, This place. We could have just fast-traveled there. <clears throat> Dustin can fly! New sub subscribed on Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. Here are your selfies and a little love and respect. Please give Dustin can fly some love in Twitch chat, everybody. Let's take a look. I see. Somebody said favorite battle theme. I don't know. 
I might give that to Persona 3 as well, but uh, the battle themes in all of them are, are good. I have an affinity for, for all of them. Hitting all five pitches will get you the slugger prize, and if you hit a home run, you'll get the home run prize. So it's timing based, as you would expect a batting cage minigame to be. Okay, so you adjust the angle of your bat to where the ball's gonna be, and then you time it right for the swing. I'm gonna put my headphones on to give myself every advantage that I can. All right, so we hit it, but we didn't get a home run. Getting a home run is kind of tricky, but we at the very least wanna hit all the balls. Oh, we missed. I say that, and then we miss. This is the first time I've missed the ball, and of course it happens on stream. We're gonna do another attempt. Oh no, we can't. This passes time. This isn't Yakuza. All right. We're gonna give myself another attempt, I think, before the stream ends. Bottom of the ball. Oh yeah, we do want to hit the bottom of the ball. You're right, Ulf. Uh, so we can knock it up and get the home run. We'll give ourselves a chance at redemption. I'm gonna blame it on nerves. Fun fact, Persona 2 Eternal Punishment is the only game in the franchise where you don't play as a high school student. Yeah, you play as an adult. <clears throat> you play as an adult. It's interesting because Persona 2 ties in so many elements from Persona 1 um, in ways that 3, 4, and 5 have not really done. I mean, there are little wink, wink, nod, nods in Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5, but uh, not nearly in the extent that you saw in Persona 2. Definitely took a different path. Okay, so let's go apply to that beef bowl job, shall we? Maybe we'll be... <laughs> we'll uh, do... Oh, we can't go out! Shit! We can't take the beef bowl job. So later on, you can go out at night. Um, but we can't go out at night right now with where we're in the game. And I it keeps throwing me for a loop because I'm not used to it. Because I'm... Obviously, well beyond this point. So what can we do? We can study. We can train. We can make tools. Let's make tools um, so I can show you guys what that's about. Um, Morgana, by the way, is awesome. I like Teddy. Morgana is much, much, much better than Teddy, in my opinion. I've got a good idea. More interesting character. Witty. Adds a lot to the conversations. <clears throat> so it's telling us that we can train in our room if we want. Training will increase our maximum HP, so that's obviously useful. Um, I haven't done a lot of this in my main playthrough, my save file right now. Um, I just didn't... There were other things that I wanted to focus on rather than training, but it's certainly useful. All right, so, um, making thieves tools. Making a lockpick is super important. When you go into a palace, the dungeons of this game, uh, you will run into locked chests that you're going to need a lockpick to open. Once you beat that palace, those chests are gone. And so you want to prepare and have lockpicks ahead of time. Very important to make lockpicks, but you need materials. And materials you can buy um, you can also get them off enemies, as you'd expect. The ways that you get materials in video games. Uh, but we don't have enough to make a lockpick right now, which is unfortunate. The only thing that we can really make, um, we can make a stethanol, stealthanol, which lowers our security level. We're pretty good at not getting caught. Not gonna waste stuff on that. Um, a Goho M is very important because it allows us to return to the entrance. So if there's a time where we need a quick getaway, it could be really useful. So we're going to go ahead and make one. Again, our proficiency determines how successful we are with making tools. Hmm. 
What are your thoughts? We made two of them. Hmm. And we can make another one. Which is okay. good. We're not going to use these a whole lot, but they are useful. Sean TSC, subscribe seven months in a row. Thank you for the continued support, Sean. I always love it in your, when you're in chat. You're very knowledgeable about JRPGs. It's always nice to have your help and your support. So much love, sincere love to Sean. And we're going to give you the first sturdy down of the day. What did you say? Ben, earlier my cat carted off with my Morgana plushie um, from the Take Your Heart edition. Damn. I love cats, but nobody wants their stuff destroyed. I love that the level one social stats are so insulting, like milk toast and bumbling and yeah. Cause when, obviously when you get into the max level, they're extremely like enthusiastic, like erudite and debonair and that sort of thing. All right, we're gonna skip this. How much of this game is battling and how much is stuff outside of battle? That's a good question. Um, palaces are long. I think that's something that probably a lot of people aren't expecting. Um, palaces can take hours. Depending on how they go for you, they can take well over two hours. Um, I mean, different people of different experience levels are going to get through them dramatically. Uh, at different times, but uh, there, yeah, there are palaces that I've spent like almost an entire evening on, just poking around and doing stuff and solving puzzles. They're pretty elaborate. Um, Let's go. But to answer your question, I think it's honestly pretty evenly split. Uh, but you can have a huge influence over that. Sucks. There's an optional dungeon that you can go to to do side quests and grind and that sort of thing. You can spend a lot of time there, or you can spend very little time there, um, and that's kind of your decision. Um, but I would say for most players, for the average player, based on the average decisions, it's probably about 50-50. That would be my guess. Um, so we said on Frame Trap, and this is kind of the example of that. They really do a good job of instilling the thief vibe into this game. This is our hideout, right? It's kind of the best that we can do right now. It's the school rooftop. We're just hanging out in the rain. Look at these idle animations. They're great. Uh, we can hold a meeting. We can discuss what we've learned about the palace. And you can get some cool incidental dialogue there. Um, there are other things that you're going to be able to do that I don't want to spoil. But uh, you can also go in and you can infiltrate. So we're going to do that. All right. I'm gonna we're going to go loose. to the other world and infiltrate this palace. Start the waifu okay, war, Ben. Oh, God. The problem is, once you start the waifu war, it doesn't stop. I sincerely don't know if I have a clear favorite character. There are a lot of characters I like, but I don't even want to say the ones that I like, because I don't want to ruin those characters for other people. So I'm probably gonna, not going to issue any hot opinions here about that stuff. Gonna give, going to give some space to the game before we get started with that. All right, so this is the palace. We're going in. These are our thief outfits, our phantom thief outfits. They look great, I think. Even just the art for the characters. I mean, look at that. Look at that guy. Look at Ryuji. Look at that devilish grin. These are great. The art in this game is insane. And their personas... That's, um, that's Anz, that's Carmen. This is one of my favorites, Zoro. Goddamn beautiful. Ryuji's is good as well, Captain Kid. Getting One Piece vibes from Captain Kid, for obvious reasons. UI of the generation, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's good. All right, so 
This is the palace. Uh, as you can tell already, I think a lot more elaborate than anything in the other Persona games, all of them. And you can interact with these palaces a lot more than you could in other Persona games, and a lot more than you can in other turn-based RPGs. Um, you can jump up places. That's You jump up a lot of places. There are some dungeons where you're jumping like crazy. Uh, and that's cool. You can get behind cover and hide and try to sneak up on enemies. You're going to be seeing a lot of that. Um, we also have a thief sense. Kind of an Arkham, Arkham Asylum kind of thing where we can see cover points. We can see these exclamation marks are climbing locations. Um, and it, also treasure! So we're going to break into this urn. We're going to get uh, loot. And basically this loot can be sold in bulk. It has no value other than just pretty much being sold. You can sell it in bulk at the shops, get some money, you can buy better stuff, that kind of thing. So you want to be on the lookout. There's a lot of loot to get. All right, let's go forward. Also, the music. Bop it. That bass. Yeah. Um... It's a good looking game. All right, so we're gonna, I think this is a like mess hall. No, it's a, a barracks it looks like. So these night guys, they're bad. We don't want them to find us. If we use our thief sense, it lets us know um, what their level is in relation to us. So they're outlined in yevil. Le they're, yevil. they're outlined in yellow, which means they're about the same level as us. If they were blue, it mean uh, we're stronger than them. Red, they're stronger than us. So you wanna keep that in mind. Sneaking up on enemies is, like, the most important thing. Sneak up on everyone. If you ambush an enemy, every member of your team gets to act first. That is super important. If they sneak up on you, they get to act for first before you can do anything. If you get careless and you get caught, you will get killed by an instant kill spell, especially later on. Don't do that. Sneak up on people. It's very important. Alright, so we're going to try to sneak up on this guy. Um, it's honestly pretty forgiving. Their, their line of sight is not great. Alright. So we got behind cover. We ambushed him. We rip off his face. And we're in combat! <clears throat> so there's a lot to unpack here. Um, something that I like that they... Something that they did that I really like is everything is just mapped to a button. So it's not digging through menus to get to what you want to do. You want to use a persona skill? You hit triangle. You want to guard? You hit circle. Uh, you want to use your gun? There are guns, um, which haven't been in a Persona game in a long time. You bust out your gun. Um, and so, you can collect enemies. We don't have this enemy. We want to collect it. So, we're going to try to do that. And the way that we do that is by targeting their weakness. We have to figure out what they're weak to, take advantage of it, knock them down, and then hold them up at gunpoint. So, you're going to see what that looks like in just a second. change our persona do we have yeah Go down. oh we did too much damage shit we just killed it outright dang unintentional here maybe on won't kill it we might be too strong for these things yep we're too strong okay so <laughs> Normally when you target their weak point, you just knock them down. You don't necessarily kill them outright, but uh, our fire was a little too hot for those mandrakes. Damn. Okay. Oh yeah, I skipped over that just because reflex at this point, but uh, the post-battle screen is really cool. I won't skip it next fight, which we'll get into shortly here. That didn't go as I planned at all. your true form right. jack o lanterns let's go all right you're mine damn all right so as we get further in we'll fight stronger things this won't keep happening um so because we're just going to kill them if we target their weakness Oh, they're weak to guns as well. Maybe this won't kill them. There we go. Alright. So they're weak to gunfire. Um, so we have different options here. 
um, we can do an all-out attack, and basically what that means is, all right, you've target targeted every enemy's weakness. As your reward, you'll get to do a super powerful attack, which usually kills things. You can also talk to them. You can also talk to them. So you get three options. Lend me your power. Basically force the persona to join your side. Give me some money, or I want an item. Um, give me money and giving me an item, that's pretty self-explanatory. But lend me your power is not. Let's go into that. But be he for all that. God damn it, Jack o' Lantern. Let's enjoy a little chat. All right, I suppose. I also love, like, you're not just you're not just having a conversation with them. You're sticking all of your weapons, all of your guns, in their face. It's cool. All right. Um, so different shadows have different personalities and you want to pick an answer that you think best fits their personality um he said have you made an appointment ho we think jack-o-lantern is kind of flippant uh so we're gonna kind of be flippant with him just tell me what you want to know he liked that our guess that he was kind of flippant paid off that was good that's the best outcome we could have gotten there, are those music notes. I actually just learned about it on the internet. You better talk to the person in charge. Alright, so this is the next question. Assuming, but let's be honest, I'm a he hundred percent sure you came all the way here to see me. How did you find out about me? Alright, our options are some flyers, a specialty site, word of mouth. Well, he did mention the internet. So maybe that's our best option. This one's kind of tricky. I don't think he would like flyers. I don't know. Especially site seems to fit the best. I actually don't know if this is the right answer. All right. He loves that. You seem a little obsessed with my activities. All right. So we said what he wanted to hear. We got two questions correctly. He's joining our side. That's awesome. So now, as we continue in fights, we can summon Jack-O-Lantern and use his abilities. We can also use him to fuse other things and make them stronger. Um, and so it really helps kind of with the monotony of JRPG fights is you can kind of tune battles to what you need. Or if you're getting bored, you can just try different things. Maybe you want to talk to a bunch of demons. Maybe you don't. Um, maybe you need a bunch of money and you can just extort as many enemies as you can uh, for as much money as possible. All of that stuff... Um, helps kind of keep things fresh. And it's way better than the silly card game stuff that was in Persona 3 and Persona 4. In my opinion. A shadow, Joker. Can you... Show me your Who true you? form. How varied are these interview encounters? Um, you always get three options, and it's always two questions, the but uh, there's enough randomness to it that Calm I would down. say it makes it pretty fresh. Another thing that you can do uh, that's cool is you can get the enemies to really low health and they'll beg for their life um, basically they, they know they're gonna lose they know you're gonna kill them and they're like wait I'll do whatever you want um, and so it's a way of getting a new persona without having to go through the conversation stuff um, you can also hang out there are certain confidants in the game that you can level up to make that negotiation stuff easier so if it's tough for you or you just don't like it there are ways of making it better or working around it so we're gonna try to we, this thing is we already have this thing so there's no point in getting it on our side, but maybe we can make it beg for its life and get some money out of it. See if we can get it at low health. Make that happen. Or we'll just kill him. Oh, he's just dead. These enemies are super weak, so it's going to be hard to kind of manipulate things without outright killing them. Sly Cooper, the JRPG. Yeah. And again, everything in this game, every minute element, this is just a post-battle game screen. Something that's usually just like a gray blob in JRPGs. It's got so much pizzazz here. The screen is fucking sparkling. This is cool. I got a new item and coins just flew up in the sky. I think it's easy to take these little things for granted, but they do add a lot to the game in a cool way. We also got some plant balm, which is used in making thieves tools. That's all well and good. Stylish as fuck. Ben, can you change your outfit? El Luchidork, that's a great question. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> I haven't found any outfits in the game 
that will allow you to change how you look. They might be there. Maybe there's something that I'm missing. So I'm not 100% on that. But I know they will be selling next week new outfits for the characters. You can dress them up in Persona 4 garb, Persona 3 garb, Persona 1 garb, um, Catherine garb. Like, all of that stuff is going to slowly roll out. So I think that stuff is just DLC. Um, which kind of sucks. Uh... 06, just subscribed with Twitch Prime two months in a row. Thank you so much for the continued support. This game is incredible. I think it's very good as well. 